Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist for Funds and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I will show you how to make the quilt called Ambling Along. The pattern for this you can find at our website and the quilt is made in a wonderful array of light pastels and a consistent white background. So what we're going to be using is 42 strips, I believe it's 21 um, different prints and colors, so you get two of everything. The fun part about using the pre-cuts is that you get a complete array. You don't have to go out and buy 21 different prints. You've got 21 already coordinated for you. So we're going to be using the two and a half inch white strips. You're going to be cutting from the yardage for the white. You're going to be cutting one inch strips, kind of narrow. We don't usually use one inch stri strips very often, but it's great in this one. Then we're going to be cutting five inch squares for offsets and two other um, squares that are going to be used for your setting triangles and we'll address those when we get to those. So to start we're going to be um, taking one of these, actually two because there's two of everything in your packet. I've got half lengths here so that we can actually manipulate them on the sewing surface. Um, we're going to be putting two like prints together and we're going to be inserting that one inch white strip. So at this point, this is going to be important that your cutting is pretty accurate because one inch strip is fairly narrow. We're not used to cutting pieces quite that size. So what we're going to be doing is adding, and this is a white on white, so you need good lighting so you can tell which is the right and which is the wrong side of your fabric. We would be adding this and quarter inch seaming here and pressing. Um, it won't really matter, I guess, which way you press your seam allowances. Usually we're used to orienting them towards the print or the darker, so it would be towards the pink. Um, you would want to sew in one direction across your um, strip set, and then when you add the second side, come back the other direction. One way to help you remember this is to leave a long tail at the end, knowing that that's the end you, you uh, finished on so that you can orient yourself to sew in the opposite direction. It keeps that strip set nice and straight and doesn't get a twist to it. So once we get those joined, I've got one here, and you can see I've pressed my seam allowances toward the outer um, wider bar, two and a half inch bars. You would not be using red thread, but um, use a white or a very um, light cream thread to stitch on this. Then you're going to be wanting to cut five, and, uh, five inch squares or units from your strips and you'll be able to get eight of those on each strip because you're going to be using an, the entire width of fabric. So if you haven't done that cutting before, we'll, we'll show you real quickly here. You're going to come in, I'm going to overcut the first one because I've got selvage edge there. Some people will trim the selvage off on their fabrics before they begin. I tend to be want, wanting to be in a hurry and get right into the cutting. So we're going to overcut. I've got about five and three quarters inch here knowing that I can take the selvage off this area. Then I'm going to flip it around and create a nice neat five inch square. And you would continue cutting down the entire length of your fabric. And if you were really wanting to get going fast, you could create two or three strip sets and lay them one on top of the other, aligning them nice and straight and cut down through multiple layers. But if you're a beginner, one at a time is probably, one layer at a time is probably your best bet. So you would create eight of those. My suggestion at that point is to divide them into groups of four because as you see, you're gonna want groupings of four like prints together for the orientation when you lay this all out. So here you can see I've cut four like that are gray background with a little rosebud, th uh, four that are of yellow and four of the blue. Now what we're gonna do is talk about how these um, are laid out in a diagonal set that we're not, it, it's another way to put quilts together. Um, it's not our normal simple grid. So what we need to do Remember I talked about that you're cutting two different sizes of setting triangles. And what we're going to do, the smaller one like this, is going to become the outer corners, the four corners of the quilt. What we're going to do is you're just going to take this square and you're going to cut across it diagonally one time. Like this. 
and that will create the outer corner. If you think about the outer corners of your quilt like this, the reason why we just take a square and cut it once is that the bias then, the stretchy part is towards the center of the quilt and it will be stabilized when it's added to a block. The outer legs that Marianne and Liz used to always talk about are a straight of grain and they don't have as much stretch. So this keeps your outer corners nice and stable. I'll lay those off to the side. Now, I've also even given myself a cheat sheet. It's a square with an X in the center. So those larger squares, you're going to be taking the ruler and you're going to cross cut them twice. And what that means is to go diagonally, corner to corner, nice and neat there. Don't want your ruler to slip because these are going to fit nicely in the outer areas of our quilt. And then you'll get, you will have four pieces like this. And if you look at them, the bias or the stretchiest sides are these two sides here, which are going to be oriented if we think about the top edge of our quilt and the side, these are going to be in the interior attached to blocks. This long leg is going to be the outer edge, which is straight of grain. So that means we will get straight of grain all the way around, straight of grain here, all the way down and around. So that is the reason why we cut setting triangles in the orientation that we do. Now, let's see if we can lay out the top corner of the quilt over there. It starts with yellow. We want a triangle in the corner. We are also going to need some of our five inch squares. So we're going to orient these seams so they all go toward, kind of joining to the, toward the center. This yellow is really pale yellow, but nice and soft, okay. Now, got those oriented. So that means we need to fill in the spaces. It means there's a white in the center of each of these joinings. The outer edge, okay, I've got one of the setting triangles laid in place, so we need another one over here. This is where a design wall would come in great. So if you've got um, the basement floor, the living room floor, um, a tablecloth, a uh, vinyl tablecloth with a kind of a, a soft fuzzy back, Lay that on the bed that you can then slide off to sleep at night. Um, it's a great way to um, lay this out because what you're going to want to do is lay it row at a time, grouping together your colors because we've got this one laid out, but we also then need to think about what we put in next. And we kind of have to fill in. This is where diagrams in the pattern are really helpful. And one here. So next door neighbor is a blue block. And remember to orient those white narrow pieces towards the center. And then I'll show you how you would actually join the rows. So we get going here. We would need more setting triangles out here. And you can see if I would add the next one below the yellow, it would be this and its mate. So that's why the groupings of four near each other is a good thing to keep them all together. And I can't barely reach that one. But now how do we, now that we have it laid out, how do we sew this together? That's the next question. What we're going to do is diagonal rows. So I'm going to, uh, the diagrams in our patterns will show you that it's kind of blown apart like this into rows so that you're going to be joining pieces, these three together. Then you can put this on the corner. So you've got your corner created. If it helps you keep oriented, put a pin or something here so that you always know that's your top left-hand corner. Then you're going to join together this row. Now when you lay these over the top, like these large triangles, sometimes people go, well, these aren't the same length. What do I do? This is a straight edge. You want this block, as you lay it right sides together, oriented, leave that triangle hang off. That's okay. So seam here and open it back up and just join this row 
block to block, all the way down. Same thing with the far triangle. You lay it on there. Think about these long pieces here. Seam right here, flip out. Now you've created this row. You can come back in and snip off those little um, dog ears and then join these rows together. That's how you create Ambling Along. For more of our video tutorials, visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.